right. Good morning, Crosspoint Church. How's everybody? Stand up for me if you would. Glad you guys are here this morning. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm grateful for y'all, just so you know. Grateful to be a part of this place. My name's Jesse. Sorry, I thought you were talking to me, Terry. <laughs> My name's Jesse. I don't know if I said that or not, but I'm one of the pastors here, and uh, we're glad you're here. If this is your first time ever at Cross Point Church, we're like extra glad you're here, and I want to meet you today if you have time for that before you head out. But we're going to sing together. We're going to worship the King, return thanks. It's about Thanksgiving this week, and... Uh, Let's just be thankful for what he's given us. Chris is going to come with an amazing message this morning. I'm excited about that. You guys bow your heads, if you would. God, we love you, and we are grateful. We're grateful not enough. We're probably guilty, everybody in this room, of not doing a good job of taking the time to return thanks to you for what it is you've blessed us with. But this morning, we want to do that. We're grateful for the stuff you give us that we don't deserve, the basics like food and shelter and clothes and stuff. We're grateful for family. But right now, God, more than anything else, I'm grateful for grace that I don't deserve. We love you. We're grateful for Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hey, Amen. You guys sing with us.
created. The Bible says that the rocks are going to cry out and the trees and everything. God's creation is going to cry out because he lives up his praise. So it's our responsibility because, man, I want to be first. I don't want a rock to beat me to praise Jesus, right? I don't want a rock that sits on the ground to be more excited about who God is and what God wants to do in my life than uh, I don't want that rock to steal my praise. I want to be able to praise him. So when you walk in this room, don't be afraid to express your praise, to lift your hands and say, thank you, God. If there's anything to be thankful for, we should be thankful for Jesus Christ, the love that he blood bestowed on us and, and the blood that he shed so that our salvation could be complete, we could be forgiven, and our lives could be changed. Amen? Amen.
Father, we thank you and we exalt you and we praise you for your mercy, grace, and love on us. Pray that, God, you would be lifted up and we would glorify your name in all things. Amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated. Oh, you already are. So, how's everybody doing this morning? Good? Woo! Yeah. Amen. Great, great time to be celebrating and thanking the Lord for all that he's done for us. It's hard to believe that Thanksgiving is almost already here, right? It's like we just turn around, and it's like my grandmother said. I think she had it right. I just didn't know it at the time. The older you get, the faster it goes. You're like, we just had Thanksgiving. Then we just had something, and then Christmas, and then New Year's, and then the 4th, and then we just go around one more time around this old earth. And I hope that you are ready. How many of you have everything you need purchased and ready on go? Raise your hand. How many of you still have some work to do? How many of you are afraid to say? Uh, okay, that's more like it. Right? So I hope they still have that, you know, whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, maybe you already got your meals planned out, the groceries are ready, and, and of course the most important thing, new batteries for the remote, right? <laughs> Because there'll be a lot of stuff going on with the remote. There'll be a lot of conversation. Hopefully no heated fellowship on Thanksgiving about whether it's going to be football or Hallmark Christmas shows. Because that could be the case. Uh, you never know. But you have to always be mindful of that. you got the recliner reserved. You know, you got your card on it already. Or you got your slippers on it. You already got it kicked open so nobody can get in it. The whole nine. Because after you eat, you're going to want to take a what? Nap. nap. Why do you want to take a nap? Because it gives you energy and strength to get back up and graze all afternoon <laughs> and into the evening. Correct? Correct. But you know, the most important thing that we can do on a day that we are giving thanks is to actually thank God for all that he's blessed us with. You know, without him, we wouldn't be here this morning. We think we're just going to wake up and tomorrow's going to come and it'll be a regular day, but he kept us breathing. He kept our hearts beating all night and allowed us to be here this morning. Psalm 107.1 says this, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. He is good. His faithful love endures forever. Just think about that for a moment. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. It doesn't say, give thanks to the Lord, for you are good. Without Him, we have no hope. We are nothing. But give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. No matter how much we try to mess it up, He still loves us. He still loves us. Psalm 7 17 says, I will thank the Lord because he is just. I will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. God is just. We, we want someone to finally set the record straight. We hear so much talk in this day and time about justice. And justice can only come from the one who is just. Amen. And we are all fallen. We are all sinful. Everyone on this planet is a sinner. Yet we continue to look to sinners to set the record straight. <laughs> have you ever thought about that? They, we want to lift up folks who have fallen just like we do to set it all straight. But God is just. He is the one who is just. And He is faithful to love us. He is faithful to love us. You know, there are very few people in this world who will love you when you are unlovable. How many of you have ever been unlovable? Be honest. How many of you have never been unlovable? We all want to see you. Oh, uh, yeah. Two wise people over here and it's not even Christmas. We are all unlovable at times. But God is faithful to love us no matter what. We should always remember that He paid for our sins with the life of His only Son. 
You know, sometimes we wonder what we are thankful for. We kind of take spells, don't we? We take these different times in our lives we are so thankful for this or for that and then we miss some of the bigger things or we're thankful for the small things and then we miss the bigger things. We miss the small things. We kind of just go back and forth. It's kind of a thankfulness pendulum, if you will. But he died for our sins that we might have eternal life in heaven with him. Without that, we have no hope. We have no hope. But he loves us and desires a relationship with us. When's the last time we have just stopped and said, Lord, I am so thankful you saw fit to send your son to save me from my own self and my own sin and my own mess and my own stuff. When's the last time we just stopped and said, God, thank you for that gift of eternal life that we base everything else we do on. We base how we treat our family. We base how we treat our friends. We base how we treat strangers and the good that we do is because he first loved us. And in this time of thanksgiving, we should never forget that. You see, he desires that we have an abundant, full life. He said, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. That goes right behind the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You see, two extremes. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy everything that you are and everything that you have. But Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it to the full or have it more abundantly. So much to be thankful for. He desires that we have an abundant, full life, a life filled with planting and harvesting. You know, sometimes we harvest and we don't even plant because God is so good. He just chooses to bless us, right? You say, I don't even know what I did, but look at how this turned out. We are also reminded, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will. For you who belong to Christ Jesus. Now, let's stop for a moment. Is there a difference between being thankful in all circumstances and for all circumstances? Yes. Because we're thankful in all in all of our circumstances. That's different. No matter what comes our way, we can be thankful. And being thankful for everything, you say, Lord, I, I'm just so glad I got in this wreck on the way to work this morning, right? Lord, I'm I just so glad my transmission came out. That's going to be four grand. Woohoo! Right? No, but we can be thankful in all circumstances. Maybe we're not thankful for everything that happens or comes our way because let's face it. There are some situations in life that are tough and can even be tragic. But can we be thankful in all circumstances? Yes, because we are not alone. We are not alone. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I got you. The only time you can be away from me, the only time that you're not going to know that I'm there is when you go somewhere else. I stepped away from the Lord and I haven't had a relationship in several years. We've just kind of grown apart. No, you left the relationship. He didn't go anywhere. You chose to move on over here and go in that direction. 
And then what happened? You came back. Why? Because you realized it was you who strayed. It was me. It was I who strayed. But he said, I'm going to be there with you no matter what. You're not going to be alone. We can be thankful we have a God who walks alongside us no matter what. In the toughest, darkest of days, and in the most joyous celebrations there are, He is with us. And for that, we can be thankful. For that, we can be thankful. You know, one of the things that causes people problems is we put everything we've got in a human being or a group of human beings. We trust man. We put it all in one person or we spend our entire lives looking for the perfect person to make life perfect. And I share this with people. You cannot fill a God-sized hole with a human being or anything else that's on this earth. But we try. If I could just find that perfect mate, when you do, let us all know. There's no such thing. Why? Because we're all sinners. But that one who loved us enough to send his son, he's never going to leave us. So we rejoice in that and we're thankful for that. He's going to walk alongside us no matter what. And so many times we're so busy going from here to there. We're so busy on Thanksgiving getting ready to give thanks that we stay busy all day getting ready for Thanksgiving. And then we say, Lord, thank you for this food. All right, let's dig in. Enjoy the fellowship. Woo! And he deserves all the praise and glory. See, we... Have a God that walks alongside us no matter what. And we also serve a God who is not surprised by our needs or our blessings. Because he meets both. He's not surprised by our needs or our blessings. Because he's walking alongside us. In the darkest, most painful days that we have. He's with us. He's with us. We have to understand that there's nothing that happens to us that he's not already aware of. He's not already got a plan for. Let me ask you this. When God acts in a situation, how do you react? How do we react? There's something that comes up and God acts in a certain situation. You've been praying and He does something to intervene. Or maybe He does nothing because He knows it's going to work out better if He doesn't intervene. And then it all works out anyway because it was His plan. How do we react? We're like, Whew, that was close. Thank you, Lord. So that would be a minor mention. Maybe it's silent thanks. Maybe it's a minor mention. Maybe it's public praise. Maybe it has to fall in there in a category. Maybe we categorize our thanksgiving. Whether we say, God, thank you because... You allowed me to get through that stoplight, wheeled into the gas station just as I was running out of gas. Whew. Right? By the way, anybody ever coasted into the gas station? Pump. A lot of blessed people in here this morning. And maybe that's how it goes. Just a whew. Maybe we don't even bring it up. Well, I don't need to really thank him because God knows my heart, does he? 
we're going to see in just a little bit that maybe we should be rushing back to him to tell him thank you. Silent thanks, minor mention, public praise. What are the categories? What gets a minor mention? Maybe it's just a mention to him, God, thank you. Maybe it's just a, a little something silent. Maybe it's a pub, public praise when you get out and you're around other people. I don't know. Does it depend on whether it's a parking space up front during holiday shopping or a healing from illness or injury? Well, you can't really categorize all those things. Listen. When we are walking with God every single day, every breath we take deserves thanks. We take it for granted otherwise. We just expect we're going to wake up. We expect that we're going to feel good. And then sometimes we just want to have our thanksgiving to the Lord be somewhat... Of a bargain. Not a bargain like shopping. Maybe in our prayer before the Thanksgiving. Maybe it's a need that we have that he's obviously not surprised by. That we say something like this. Lord, if you will, then I'll... And then I'll praise you. Then I'll tell everybody, if you will, then I'll... I'll praise you. I'll let everybody know. Not how that works. Not how that works. But aren't we quick to do that? Maybe when we're desperate. Maybe when something hard comes our way. But I want to tell you this. An attitude of gratitude. Hang with me right here can change your altitude depending on how high you're flying. That's the altitude, right? Jumbo jet can fly 35, 40,000 feet. I think that's right. Fact check me if I'm wrong. Don't tell me. But if you are in a small plane, you can't get that high. It's not built for that. But if you have this attitude of gratitude for things that are happening in your life, that God is doing in your life, in the relationship you have with Him, the things that other people do, that you can smile at people, that you can be kind to people, if you're just thankful to wake up and be alive for today, for today, then it changes your whole attitude. And your attitude changes your altitude, how you're feeling. If you are just thankful, it's healthier for you. Did you know that? Being grateful, being having an attitude of gratitude and being thankful in your life and being a thankful person is actually healthy for you. So why then are we not more... Thankful. The main part of our message this morning is going to come from Matthew chapter 17. In Matthew chapter 17, we're going to see a picture of what happens many times, even in our day and time today. Matthew chapter 17, beginning in Verse 11, the Bible says this. As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, ten men with leprosy stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. Now you stop right there. You have to understand at this particular period of time, 
if you had leprosy, if you were a leper, you usually lived in a leper colony. You were quarantined, if you will. And you couldn't go be with the others. If you were to be around the others, you had to come in and yell, Unclean! Unclean! So they would have time to get out of your way. But they saw Jesus and they called out to him. Verse 15 says, One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, Praise God! He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus said, Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. What a picture we see here. You have unclean outcasts asking for mercy, begging for mercy. Jesus, Master! Have mercy on us. And in our society, we have those that we maybe haven't categorized or, or we haven't as a society done anything with a certain group of people, but maybe there's people that you see are saying, hey, can you help me? We don't know whether to be frightened. And I'm not saying put yourself in an unsafe situation. We've talked about that before. But there are people who are crying out for help. And as a church, what we've understood and what we say and what we talk to you about as believers and believers everywhere is ministry is messy. Sometimes you have to get down among those who need the most help. Not for a handout, but a hand up. But we might have to get in there where they are. So these unclean outcasts are asking for mercy. And following the law and Jesus' instructions, they were healed on the way. He said, go, show yourselves to the priests. Because that's what you had to do. He's saying, you go ahead and go show them because on the way, something's going to happen. What if we woke up in the morning with that expectancy of when we wake up, God is going to do something through us, amazing, maybe even for someone else, not for ourselves, but for someone else, if we will just go, if we will wake up and go in His name, go in Jesus' name about our business, not just go about our business. Not just go throughout our day, but what if we go about our day in Jesus' name? And so when someone says, hey, sir, excuse me, ma'am, could you help me? You see, there's a new phrase that has been coined. For those who work in service industries and in ministries and in areas of great need. Compassion burnout. Have you heard of it? Compassion burnout where we're supposed to be compassionate. But we have seen so much and heard so much and served so much and listened so much and reached out so much. We're just burned out. We can't take it anymore. I will tell you this. Can we be overwhelmed? Absolutely. Absolutely, we can be overwhelmed. Can we get tired? Absolutely. But when we wake up and go in Jesus' name, maybe we're run down. Yes. But as long as we're alive, we shouldn't run out of help to offer someone else. We offer what we can. 
Because Jesus said, go, show yourselves to the priests. And they did. Because, you see, when we're obedient, he's already working. He didn't, he didn't say, let me heal you right now, then go show yourselves to the priest. He said, go show yourselves to the priest. And then what happened? And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. They were like, okay, we're going to follow what you say. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. Healed on the way. Now, one of them, one of them, verse 15, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus. How many of them do you think, how many of the ten saw that they were healed? Just throw a number at me. Here's a hint. Ten. They had to go. Wow, he did it. We're healed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus. One of them came back to Jesus. But how did he come back? He came back to say thank you. How did he do that? He came back to Jesus shouting. Shouting, praise God. This man had suffered enough and he saw what Jesus did. He said, praise God and then what? Fell on his face before Jesus. We need to learn from this, folks. We need to learn that whenever... God does something for us. We are to come back right then and say, God, thank you. We take it for granted. Oh, he knows my heart. He knows my mind. He's got it. We have this thing. We have a connection. He already knows. Tell him. Tell him. Fall on your face and say, God, thank you. Thank you. One of them came back to Jesus to say thank you. 90%. 90% failed to truly thank him. What if that were the church? What if that were the church? Well, God knows I'm thankful. God knows I love him. I don't need to tell him. He knows what I need. I don't need to pray. I go to church on Sundays. I get some scripture. I don't need to read it. Ninety percent failed to truly thank him, but praising God, he fell on his face. Church, I want to tell you, until we begin to thank God for what he's done and truly praise him for what he's done, how will we ever expect he's going to continue to bless us? Why? Would he, if we're going to go the other way? Well, wait a minute. He knows, right? He already knows the other nine. They appreciated it. Well, then I wonder why in verse 17 he would ask, Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? If he blessed you, if he intervened on your behalf, if he woke you up this morning, you know, and isn't that funny? What wakes us up in the morning? Our alarm clock, our phone, a rooster, the dogs, whatever. No, God wakes us up. He allows us another day. But if it means nothing to him that if we're thankful for the big things or the little things, then why did he say, didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? 
Has no one returned to give glory to God except the foreigner? When is the last time we fell on our face before God? When is the last time you fell on your face before God? Said, Lord, I need to get some things right with you. I need to thank you for all these other things. You know what I think keeps us from doing that more often? Because we are too busy worrying about the things that we don't have the things that aren't the way we want them, the things we still need, grumble, 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 grumble. We're so busy grumbling, we forget about how many things we have to be thankful for. Now, I guarantee you, if you got a a paper and pencil and you just started writing down the things you're grateful for, the things you're thankful for, You'd be writing a long time. And if you're not writing a long time, then you need to do some more thinking. <laughs> right? All these things we take for granted. That God has blessed us with. But I think it's important that we stop, especially this time of year. And not just talk about Thanksgiving, not just talk about being grateful. But to say what happened with this whole idea that I'm going to be thankful all day long. I'm going to be thankful for the next breath and the next meal and the next moment and the next and the next and the next and the next. next. I would even say that Sometimes we spend so many moments capturing memories. Nothing wrong with it, by the way. But we spend so many moments capturing memories on cell phones, our, our cell phone, our pictures. Our, it's our, also our video. It's also, it's also, it's also. But we spend so many time, so much time capturing memories those memories that we're not living in that moment. Would you rather have that memory etched in your mind forever or have it all on your phone? How many of you have tons of pictures on your phone? Raise your hand. All right. What happens when it gets smashed? Oh, we have the cloud. Woohoo! Well, good for you. How many times do you print off those pictures from the cloud? You know where they are? In a cloud somewhere. And unless it starts raining pictures one day, you're not going to have them. I love just looking back and going through photo albums. They're so rare these days. For all of us, I'm talking to myself as well. I want to challenge you to enjoy these moments. Be in it. Don't just capture it. Be in it. And I'm guilty of that myself. But in that, we should fall on our face before God with thanksgiving and praise, saying, God, thank you for this life. No matter how brief, No matter how much time I have left, no matter how little time I have left, I'm thankful for, you know what? Today. And everything in it. Just today. You see, Jesus' words for the lepers should convict us. Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? In this scenario, would you rather be the one or one of the nine? The one, right? If that's the case, then I wonder if there are times we could have heard Jesus say these words to us. 
And we thank Him for a blessing. Were there not other times I have blessed you? You didn't thank me for those. But I'm thanking you for this one because it's a big deal. I'm thanking you for this one because it's something that I really needed. Woo! Minor mention, silent thank you, public praise. Which was it? I wonder if he would say, were there not other times that I have healed you? You know, there are probably times that we've been healed that we didn't even know we were healed. But he took something away. And he kept us here for his purpose. I wonder if he might say, were there not other times I have kept you safe? Lord, thank you for keeping us safe in this accident. What about that time that I made you late and you were mad all the way to work and then took it out on your coworkers? I made you late because had you been on time, you would have been in a head-on collision. We don't even know that. We don't have to know that. Were there not other times I have provided for you? Lord, thank you that you came through this time. What about all the times he's provided otherwise? Grocery-wise, fuel-wise, gas-wise, car repairs, appliances go out. We paved the way. You know, with car repairs, just know this. The car warranty people, they'll help take care of you too. Just so you know. Right? Just let them know. They'll take care of you. They can call you from anywhere on the planet, by the way. I don't know anybody in Sioux City. Hello! They know what kind of car I got. I no longer have the 74 Vega, sir. I'm sorry, but thank you for calling. I mean, there are times that he's provided for you when you didn't even know you needed provision. He took care of you when you didn't even know you needed provision. It looked seamless. It looked like it was amazing how things just kind of worked out. You didn't even hardly, you hardly even noticed it. You didn't even notice it. But it was seamless because he provided for you. And he's provided for you even when you thought it was impossible. There's no way. I I don't see another way out. I don't know what we're going to do. He made a way. I love this. Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith is has healed you. Your faith has saved you. Your faith has taken care of you. See, it's our faith that heals this sinful body. Our faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's the only hope we have. That was his only hope here for healing physically and otherwise. He said, go. Your faith has healed you. Your trust in Him is enough. Have you thought about that? If you just stop, you've got your trust in these other things. Your faith in God is enough. What continues to work is your mind. And sometimes it's the enemy going, yeah, well, how are you going to get out of this? I'm going to push you on that. I'm going to see if you get, really got faith. And you got to say, you know what? I got faith no matter what. And one of the things I like to all, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No matter what your circumstance, no matter what my circumstance, our God is able to save us from whatever's going on. He's able to provide when it looks like there's no other way out. But 
even if he doesn't, we will still serve him. We will still give him thanks. We will still praise him. See, your faith has healed you. Your trust in him is enough. He is enough to meet every need you have, and he will. Maybe it's not how you thought it was going to go. Maybe it's going to take longer than you thought it was going to take. Maybe he's going to use other people and bless them in blessing you. But he's enough to meet every need you have, and he will. But it's like this. In his time, not yours, and in his way, not ours. You know, just something that just kept coming to me as I was preparing for this week. Something I think we need to think about. And it has to start with you. And it has to start with me. And it has to start small. And it's this thought. This Thanksgiving and Christmas... Maybe this nation, maybe all of us, if we would learn to be more grateful, then maybe we'd be less hateful. You ever think about that? Because you can't be grateful and hateful at the same time. They don't go together. So we're busy being one or the other. Grateful or hateful. And that's all we see, no matter what. It's just spewing out like poison everywhere. But you know what? I choose to be thankful. I choose to let all that stuff that's swirling around that Satan keeps stirring up. Let's try to love one person out of that. Try to love on somebody. Try to change their heart. Not about any political idea. Not about any other thing. Just love on them and say, listen, do you know Christ? Here's what he's done in my life. Here's what he's doing in our community. Here's how he's using us to further the kingdom. Maybe if we had an attitude of gratitude, it would change our altitude. We would just quit flying this high off the ground. We would begin to soar. Say, God, you just take me and use me wherever you want, but let me be thankful no matter where that is. Maybe this morning, maybe you just need to come and say, God, forgive me that I've not fallen on my face and said, God, thank you for this. Thank you for that. So much we take for granted. God, come, just come and pour out on my family. Forgive me, Father. We're all coming down. Maybe you need to come individually and say, Lord, I want to pray for this nation. I want to pray for this community. I want to pray for all those who have great need. Whatever that looks like for you, you come in just a moment. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much just for giving us another day. Knowing we're not promised tomorrow, Lord, we love you so much. We thank you for giving us breath. Father, I pray that you would move in this place this morning, that you would move people forward, find a place on their knees, maybe to find a place on their face, to say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for touching me. If it all ends tomorrow, God, thank you for a blessed life. God, let me not be guilty of failing to thank you. Let me be the one that will, not one of the nine. Lord Jesus, thank you. Move as only you can among your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand, please? Listen, if you don't have a relationship with Christ, you make your way. I'll meet you right over here online. If you need a relationship with Christ, say, I need Jesus. We'll have someone contact you. You move. Don't wait. Make your way right now. Whatever the need is, make your way. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken.
pray, Jeremy. We pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. Make your way. Make your way. Make your way, church. Don't wait. Thank you guys for worshiping with us today. A couple things before we head out. On the way out, it's, it's Christmas time, right? So Advent starts next week, and so we've got these books out there for you, these Advent booklets. This is a scripture every day for you to read with your family. Please take one of these, one per family. If you don't mind, this is just a great way to help keep Jesus at the center of everything that's going to happen over the next uh, month or so. So uh, please take this with you when you go participate in this with us as a family. We'll have some scripture, some families reading scripture uh, starting next week, so I'm excited about all that. Also, if you took a Cougar Christmas box, uh, remember December the 5th is the return time. If you have any questions about that, please let me know. Do not tape your box up. You can just kind of fold it over because, believe it or not, we're going to look inside your box. It's not. Don't be intimidated by that, but we are. 
And uh, we're going to sort through some things. So uh, please do that. December the 5th is the return time. If you are brand new with us today, and some of you are, I met you on the way in, we would love to get to hang out with you, give you a free gift if you didn't get one on the way in. Chris is standing right over there in the uh, first-time guest nest. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Good one, boss. Uh, I'm going to go over there and, and with him, but we would love to know that you're here. We've got some information for you to fill out. If you want to, no pressure, and, you know, snacks and stuff. So, anyway, thank you guys for being here. Uh, bow your heads with me, if you would. God, we do love you, and we're grateful that we get to serve a God and be a part of a family of God with a, a Father like you that does supply every single need. You take care of us, and there's nothing that we have, nothing that we come across that you can't handle. It's not too big for you. Doesn't surprise you. And I pray that there's comfort for folks in this room because of that today. We love you and in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. See you next week.